Hey guys, this is Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel, and thank you for watching the Spectrum AR636 programming series. This will be part 20, how to set up your Spectrum telemetry-capable transmitter to perform in-flight AS3X gain adjustments. And in order to set up our transmitter to change the gains in flight for the AR636, the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we can see the AS3X gain data being sent from the receiver over telemetry on the transmitter. So right now, if we go over to our telemetry on the IX12, we can see that we're getting our transmitter battery, receiver voltage, frame loss, and flight log holds. Well, again, we can look at our flight log and our min-max logs, but we cannot get to our AS3X data. In order to set that up, we're going to need to go to Model Setup and Telemetry. Here, we can go to any of the empty slots, but just slot 1, tap on it, and what we want to do is select AS3X. As we scroll down the list, we'll see AS3X here, and we're going to add that to slot one, so we'll go ahead and have it selected and we'll hit the save button here. So now we can see that we have AS3X telemetry data getting passed from the AR636 over to the IX12. So if we hit the back button and back out of model setup, now when we go through the telemetry, we can see that the last page is showing us our AS3X gain data. Now that we have our transmitter set up to receive the telemetry data for AS3X from the AR636 receiver, we want to go into Model Adjust and go to AS3X. Under AS3X, we'll be able to see our different flight modes that we have set up. Gyro enabled. We have safe mode, gyro enabled. Gyro disabled. Gyro disabled. And we can also see several settings down here at the bottom of the screen. This has already been set up prior to making this video, but we'll go ahead and go through the different options that would be available to you and what you want for each one. For the input, that's going to be the trimmer that we would use to adjust the gains in flight. Now keep in mind, this will only be applicable to a DX9 or better that have trimmers outside of your normal four channels for your throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. On the DX9 or better, there are also right and left trim switches up in the, uh, the, the eyebrows, if you will, on the right and left side at the top of the transmitter. And those are the only things that are available uh, when we go to select which one we want to have as our input. Uh, for the DX6, uh, and DX8, you will have the roller available, and I believe it's available on the DX9 as well, and the DX18, DX20. You would have the roller available, but the only way to use the roller is to actually be on the AS3X page, uh, not in the telemetry settings, because the roller, while you're in flight, will just go back and forth between your monitor and your uh, telemetry data, and you would need to be on the AS3X screen here to adjust that information and you wouldn't be able to see anything else on your display while you're in flight. So uh, a DX9 or better is what I would recommend for this particular um, use case of attempting to adjust your uh, gains while the model's in flight. So again we'll go here to input and we'll select that and on the IX12 we can either inhibit the input or we can use the left trimmer or right trimmer. I've got the left trimmer selected. The channel is where we want to pick the channel that the transmitter is sending the input for the flight mode that we programmed in the receiver. So on the AR636, we set up the flight mode select to be done over AUX2. So that's what we'll select here is AUX2, and that's the channel 
that the transmitter will send the telemetry data over to adjust those gains while we're in flight. And the switch is the switch that we have set up to transmit over AUX2, which is already set up to switch B, which is where we want that to be. So now we can go, uh, now that we have all of that configured, we can go back out to model adjust and go back over to our main page. And now we need to make a couple of adjustments inside the receiver. And we can do that with the AS3X programmer application with our mobile device. We've gone ahead and connected to our receiver using the Bluetooth programmer module as well as the AS3X programming application. What I want you guys to pay attention to at this point is what our gain settings are on each flight mode. So in flight mode 1, which would be our gyro disabled, all of our gains are set to 0%. In flight mode 2, our rates are set to 40%. For the roll, 40% for pitch and 50% for yaw, and those flight uh, those gains are matched in flight mode three, which is our safe flight mode. So again, flight mode one is the gyro disabled, flight mode two is gyro enabled, and flight mode three will be our safe mode. The other thing that I want you to pay attention to is underneath. On our dashboard, underneath each gain percentage, you'll see the letters ABS. ABS stands for absolute. Whenever we go to adjust our gain settings, whether we do it by tapping here, where we can choose either absolute or relative, as you can see here, or we go through the AS3X settings, gain and priority, we can tap on any of the gain settings for a particular flight mode. So here we're in roll and we can tap on flight mode two and we can alter those settings here as well. Down here at the bottom where it has rate gain, we can change between absolute and relative. We'll go ahead and back back out and go back to our dashboard. And on the dashboard, we're going to go ahead and alter one of these gain settings. So say we're having some oscillations uh, in flight for our ailerons. What we'd want to do to be able to adjust the aileron gain in flight is change the aileron gain from 40% absolute to 40% relative. Because 40% is offering up some oscillations anyway. We want to back down from there, but we don't know at this point exactly how far we want to back off of those gains. But what we'll do is we'll change that to relative, and then we'll go back to the IX-12 to see how setting that to relative alters the way that it behaves as we adjust the trimmer on the IX-12. We'll go ahead and save that into the transmitter and go back to the IX-12 at this time. Now we're back in the IX-12 and we are in flight mode 2 which is our gyro enabled flight mode. We have the trimmer set to 100% so you can see on the IX-12 our gain is set to 40%. Now as we start to adjust the trimmer you'll be able to see the percentage actually changing. So I am doing that with the transmitter, not through any of the applications, right? So this is the telemetry data sending across the transmitter. So now my trimmer is at 0%, and we'll go ahead and change that and let it run through the full range from 0 back to 100%. Now remember that it is a relative number. 100% on the transmitter does not give us 100% gain. It is a relative number from 0 to 100% on the transmitter relative to what you have already programmed into the AR636. So 100% of 40 is 40. 50% of 40 would be 20. So if we're oscillating at 40%, we may only want to back down our rate gain to, say, 30%. Now, in flight, 
we would be able to use that left tremor to adjust the gain of the ailerons and trim out any of the oscillations that may be happening. So say we're still oscillating at 30, we can adjust it down to 25, 26. And then when the airplane gets back down on the ground, we can look down at our transmitter, see that our rate was 26%, and then we can set 26% using our Bluetooth mobile device as the absolute gain for that particular uh, axis and flight mode. Now, one of the other features that I wanted to look at while we're looking at the AS3X telemetry data on the transmitter is the interaction between the physical position of the sticks on the transmitter in comparison to what we see on the telemetry data. So right now we can see that our roll, our pitch, and yaw are set to 40%, 40%, and 50% respectively. And the actual gain is showing 40, 40, and 50% as well. Now right now, all of our control surfaces are centered on the aircraft. As we start moving the sticks away from the center point, what you'll see, because of the way that the stick priority of AS3X works, if you recall back to one of the previous videos in the series, we talked about stick priority, and the further away from center we get from the sticks, the lower the amount of gain that's actually getting applied to that control surface, which offers a much more natural feel while we're flying. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the aileron to the right, and you'll see that the more that I move the aileron to the right, the less actual gain I'm going to have. Now I'm about 20% to the right at this point, and although my aileron is set to 40% gain, I'm actually getting 0% gain on that particular control surface because the AR636 understands that I am in control of the airplane at this point, so it does not apply any gain to it. As I release the stick and allow the uh, control surface to go back to center, you'll see that all of my gain goes back into the uh, into the control surface and I am now you know under the effects of AS3X stabilization again now, the same holds true for my elevator as I get the elevator further away from center uh, whether that is up elevator or down elevator you'll see that the actual gain will drop as I move further from center, and the same holds true for the rudder. I'm currently moving the rudder stick to the left and to the right, and it will adjust from zero gain at the furthest extremities, and as I get closer to the center, I'm getting to about that 20% point where you'll see the gain getting reapplied as I get closer to the center. And now we're back at our 50% gain. So, that's a neat way to, uh, to see the interaction of the physical position of your sticks and the way that stick priority works with AS3X. All right, so that's all there is to uh, setting up the in-flight gain adjustments on an AR636 with your spectrum telemetry uh, capable transmitters. Be sure to stay tuned for the final part of the AR636 programming series where we're going to go over how to use preset Horizon Hobby SRM files in a new or reclaimed AR636 receiver.